Hello and welcome to BHS TV News. I'm your host, Sophie Kay, alongside my co-host, Noelle Seawick. Today we have coverage on midterm elections, the school musical, and a brand new edition of Word on the Street. BHS TV News starts right now. Last week, pipe bombs were delivered by mail to 14 prominent Democrats in the U.S., including former President Barack Obama, former Tech Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and former Attorney General Eric Holder. None of the devices detonated and no one was hurt. Authorities arrested their top suspect, Caesar Sayak, after a four-day manhunt. Sayak made his first appearance in court on Monday, October 29th, facing five felony charges and up to 48 years of jail time if convicted. Sayak's attorney, Daniel Aronson, insists that his client will not be pleading guilty at this stage. The authorities have found evidence of a list of over 100 people to whom Sayak intended to send packages. Sayak was said to be pushing a conservative agenda targeting prominent Democrats. And in the realm of politics, the midterm elections are coming up. Here to tell us more is Grace Shoda. Well, these midterm elections are exceptionally important. They're always important because midterm elections, especially every eight years, change the face of Michigan. We have term limits in Michigan, so you'll be having a, a new governor's face, a new attorney general face, a new secretary of state face. You have congressional seats up uh, for Congress, for the Senate, for our state, uh, state Senate and uh, state House seats. All of those are up and they change the face of Michigan and the way our government will be run. So you have three proposals that people can vote yes, no on. The marijuana proposal, the uh, second proposal is about redistricting, and the third proposal is about changing voting procedures. We find that in Bloomfield Township, people turn both turn over both sides of the ballot. And they will turn over both sides of the ballot this time because there are proposals on the other side and the local issues are on the other side. But those proposals in and of themselves always generate enough interest to get them to turn over the ballot. And I think every person who has the right to vote should utilize that responsibility. Every vote counts. And I can't tell you how many elections are won or lost by 10 or less votes or one vote sometimes has changed the chorus of a candidate's race. And in Michigan, 96% of our uh, people who are eligible to vote are registered. We don't really have a registration problem here. Our issue is getting more people out to vote. What I would say to young adults registering to vote for the first time is welcome to the height of democracy when you have that right to exercise your vote. And we are so excited to have you participating. I would suggest to you that you read the ballots carefully, that you take interest in the different races. So I would encourage you to take advantage of any way you can get to a precinct or get an absentee ballot to do so for this election and all elections in the state of Michigan. Welcome back. On Sunday, October 28th, the Boston Red Sox won the 2018 World Series. The Red Sox beat out the Los Angeles Dodgers 5-1 in Sunday's game, pulling out their fourth win since 2004. This also feels like a win for Detroit, as many former Tigers players made the Red Sox roster this year, along with Dave Dombrowski, former general manager of the Detroit Tigers, who is now serving as the president of baseball operations for the Red Sox. This is an impressive end for the team, who ended the full season with a stunning 119-57 record. Here at BHHS, our extracurricular programs are buzzing this time of year. Here's Kat Vaselli with coverage on this year's current musical theater production. Even miracles take a little time. The quick approaching fall musical Cinderella is coming to BHHS, and here the students are putting in countless hours of practice and rehearsal time in order to make the musical magical. 
When it comes to musicals, people usually think about what they see. They're captured in the sparkling costumes, lights, and dancing. However, most don't realize what keeps the show together, the music. Here we have Mr. Scott Wolf, the orchestra director, to talk about what it takes to be in the orchestra. Boy, the ch most challenging part with orchestrating, getting people to participate in a musical, is just getting them to commit full time to it. We have so many wonderful musicians, and so many of our wonderful musicians do everything. And when everyone does everything, we kind of leave stuff to kind of chance. But it is a great joy to be able to put it together every year. Say the orchestra puts in about 30 hours to 40 hours in preparation of music alone. And that's not including all of their personal practice time. That's just ensemble time. Picking a favorite section of music to conduct is like saying, I have a favorite child. It just doesn't work. Each one has its own unique aspect. I mean, I love performing the first work of a piece, like the overture to the musical, because it's like the, everything that's going to happen beyond it. And then, of course, the ending where you get to have all of those themes back again. It's just such a joy to do it, just to see people's happy faces and to look at the stage and know that as pit musicians, we made the stage look good and sound good. And sometimes no one even looks into the pit to know who's down there. So that's kind of the joy of it. We're the, we're the, we're the hidden heroes of the musical. That's a lot of work. Thanks, Mr. Wolf. Everyone be sure to go see Cinderella the weekend of November 15th. Fall was an exciting time for BHHS athletics. And with fall sports wrapping up, let's take a quick look back at our sports teams. The football team started strong with a 39-14 win over Utica, but then went on to lose seven games in a row. However, the Blackhawks ended on a high note with a victory over Rochester High School. The football team will shift their focus to next year as they move down a division, from the OAA Red to the OAA White. The Bloomfield Hills varsity soccer team made it all the way to the playoffs and defeated Southfield 8-0 in the first round. Unfortunately, the Blackhawks soccer team fell to see home in the second round. Great job to the boys varsity soccer team on their great season. The girls golf team finished with an impressive fourth place finish at state championships. Michaela Schultz finished in second place overall with a 2 over total score. Good luck to the girls swim and dive team as they finish up their season and head to state finals on November 16th and 17th. Congratulations to the girls and boys cross country team on great seasons with their new coach, Mr. Richardson. The Blackhawks focus on their November 3rd state finals meet. The undefeated boys varsity tennis team claimed the 2018 Division I state title for the second year in a row. The varsity tennis team has now won its third state title in four years. Andrew Zhang placed number one in singles, Noah Rosin and Adrian Weiland finished number one in doubles, as well as many other second, third, and fourth place finishes. We are very proud of the tennis state champions. Great job to the volleyball team on a good season with the playoff run, and congratulations to all of our Blackhawk teams. Go Blackhawks! I am a Taurus, Cancer, Leo, Capricorn. What's your sign? I'm Ronnie Kane for BHS TV News. Are you fearless and outgoing? If so, you might be a Gemini, Leo, or Sagittarius. Or are you peaceful and balanced? Then you could be a Pisces, Libra, or Taurus. Since as far back as the ancient Greeks, 12 zodiac signs, each matched with their own constellation, have been used to explain the personality of an individual, as well as one's compatibility and daily interactions with others. Your zodiac sign represents the position of the sun at the time of your birth. But is there any science behind horoscopes? The zodiac signs are really constellations that are on the plane of ecliptic. Our solar system's kind of like a disc shape, and the ecliptic slices the disc in half. And so those are the zodiac signs, are the constellations that lie along that. You really are born under a zodiac sign because it's the constellation that's above you at that point um, of the year. Whether they affect your day or anything like that is a whole different um, story. So before you say yes to that next date, be sure to check to see if this match was written in the stars. For BHS TV, I'm Ronnie Kane. Tragedy struck at a Pittsburgh synagogue on October 27th 
when the man named Robert D. Bowers opened fire on the congregation with an AR-15 and three handguns during Saturday services. Eleven people were killed and four police officers were injured. While Mr. Bowers has no previous criminal record, he has been charged by federal authorities with 29 criminal counts. This hate crime has sparked outrage in Jewish communities, as well as a call to Washington for gun control. Activists have taken to social media to call for change. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims of this awful tragedy. Before we close out this week's installment of BHS TV News, Connor Renouche and Parker Haysha have cooked up a brand new episode of Word on the Street. After this brief message. Hello everyone and welcome back to Word on the Street Season 2. I'm Parker Haysha. And I'm Connor Renouche. Word on the Street is, it's National Men Make Dinner Day. Oh yeah, it's that time of year again where men make dinner. Um, yeah. Here at Word on the Street, we wanted to bring this important day directly to your screens. We asked some lovely people if they would like to join us for a one-on-one -on -one homemade dinner. Check it out. Hello, Benny. Connor. Mr. Fellows, how are you? How are you today? Doing, doing amazing today, this morning. Hello and welcome to BHS TV News. Today we have a special guest, Brooke. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for being here with me. Uh, I've been looking forward to this dinner for a long time, and uh, I really think we're going to have a great uh, experience here. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard, but it happens to be National Men Make Dinner Day, so as the men of Word on the Street, we decided that we were going to get some, some very special guests and make them some very special food. How do you feel going into this? I feel absolutely honored to be your special guest today for the special meal. We were going to give you a spoon, but you brought this, um... Oh yeah, but first, we have to put you in a blindfold. Just for... Okay. <laughs> Can't see a thing. Cannot see a thing. Not one thing. Oh, I just hit you in the hand with the microphone. Yeah, I, I couldn't see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, first meal. <laughs> okay. First. Okay. Open your mouth. It's kind of. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. All right. Mm. Oh god. What is your reaction to that? It tastes like special K but really soggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's delicious. So this was raisin bran without milk. Uh, it was actually filled with blue Gatorade. Blue Gatorade? Yes. Okay, but that wasn't that bad. It kind of tasted good. <laughs> How long has the raisin bread been sitting in the Gatorade? About 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> That's, it's and delicious. the Gatorade was left out all night. Oh my god. Alright, perfect. 
<laughs> okay. Now, naturally, that was your starter. Did you? Do you think that got you well in the mood for this this meal? Crying under the blindfold. Yes, it was delicious. I heard David threw up. Uh, the trash can is right there. <laughs> Fix that point. Just wanna, yeah, yeah that's right. good. All right, all right. So I guess you have your own. Oh, oh he's just gonna go right. Oh. He's just gonna go right in. Damn. Now this is a much bigger bite. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 the garbage can. The garbage can. You're right. Oh god, remember? <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's good. So what are some of the things you were tasting there? I don't know. I have it. Thank you. Delicious. That tastes cheese. Mac and cheese without the cheese. And it had some sort of seasoning and gummy worms and raisin nuts. We're not going to be able to use any of this, bro. Now, this third course, waiter, please bring it in. It's a lot lighter. It's a lot nicer for the taste buds. Light iron. And you might be able to gasp by the, the feel. But. So, uh... Oh, you made cookies. That's a cookie. What is that? Is this a normal cookie? Yes, it oh, is. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on that one? <laughs> Mr. Fellows, I'd like to thank you for coming and participating. That's a hearty handshake right there. Thank you for being my special guest. And yeah. Well, that was a cookie. And that's all for Word on the Street. With my good friend, Polar Bear, I'm Parker Haysha. Oh my god. Mmm, <laughs> I like that. While we may have failed to make the greatest of dinners, we do appreciate all of our dates for sharing that lovely night with us. I'd also like to thank my good friend, Polar Bear, for all of his help. For Word on the Street, I'm Parker Haysha. And I'm Connor Renouche. Hey, are you hungry? Uh, no, not at all. And with that, we conclude this year's second episode of BHS TV News. If you have questions or suggestions for us, feel free to send us an email at bhstvnews at bloomfield.org. Tune in to This Week Today for updates on extracurricular activities, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at bhstvnews. Tune in next time for more news around the world, in your state and in your classroom. I'm Noelle Seawick. And I'm Sophie Kay. Thank you for watching.